After 70 years on the throne, the Queen attended hundreds of iconic state dinners, meetings and events with photographers, of course, around her every All step the of the way yeah. to capture what are, of course, moments in history. Well, yes, of course, because it is reckoned she was the most photographed woman ever, actually. Mm. And we're joined by one of the photographers who has been capturing pictures of her and others in the royal family for well over 20 years, I think. Ian Lloyd is with us. Hello there. Hello, uh, good morning. Yeah, I think she probably was the most photographed woman in the world. Yeah, How many photographs have you taken of her in, her, well, in your time? In my time. I've not done it that recently, I have to say, but certainly from the 80s, 90s, noughties, I've got about 50,000, I think, tucked away. 50,000? Yeah, not, well, not all of them good, but anyway. Oh. But the, the sheer longevity of it, because if, when she was a little baby living near uh, Hyde Park, the nanny would take her out for a walk and the press would chase her in those days. Not Is many, right? but um, there were lots of pictures in her pram. And so you had a lifetime of it, and you think right the way through to the That's photographs. That's interesting, because when she was a baby in a pram, she wasn't... Nobody knew that she was in line to the throne. No, absolutely, but she was the golden hope of the royal family oh. because she was the cute little baby. Even at Windsor, because I've done this book, actually, I'm the queen, the queen. Uh, as a writer, not a photographer, because I wasn't around in the 1920s, mm. but they did, actually, the king and queen did put her out in a pram on the Castle Mound so that people, tourists, could see her. And her very first oh. trip out... She was born in Bruton Street in Mayfair. Right. Yes, I was just thinking at the time, there wouldn't have been a baby for many, many, many years in the royal family. Well, there was. She was with her cousins, but they were, yeah, the, but two, they were, they were yeah, the sons of a princess, so, so they weren't important, mm. but she was a princess. And, I mean, at the age of three, she was on the front of Time magazine. They'd named half of, well, quite a bit of Antarctica, Princess Elizabeth Land. She was on a stamp in Newfoundland as a three-year-old, oh. and yet she was the equivalent of Princess Beatrice. She yeah. was the daughter mm. of a second son. But her first trip out was to Buckingham Palace because they didn't have much gardens at where she was born. And the general strike was on 1926, and she was a morale booster. And when she arrived with the nanny, Queen Mary, the Queen's granny, said, oh, take the baby out. So the nanny took the baby out to the railings of Buckingham Palace mm. and... The public got this glimpse. So it's a lifetime. That wouldn't have been photographed particularly in those days, but, you know, a lifetime mm. of public... Uh, and people following her and trying adulation. to get a good picture. Yeah. 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 It's interesting, all these things that we sort of didn't realise about her. So, you know, you're very aware of... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of talk of Princess Elizabeth, but obviously from when she made the commitment to the country at 21... Mm. We sort of became... Or when we look back, that's when we became more familiar with her, but clearly there's a lot more to it. And photography has changed. I once I met a, a man who photographed in Australia in 1953, and he said, with the flash, they used to have this kind of powder in and everything, mm. he only had one attempt with a flash gun. And he said all he remembers is in the car, as after they're all taking the photograph, is the Queen blowing this sort of oh. flash powder and things off her, her coat, you know. So, so, so oh, you see, different... when, when the bulb exploded, yeah. you've got a showering of bits and pieces. <laughs> Tiny. Debris. Mm. Oh, charming. Oh, interesting. Shall we have a look at some of your photographs? Um, uh, for those of you uh, listening on the radio, I'll try and describe it. You've got a, a young Prince William looking absolutely... Very handsome Prince yeah, William. Yeah, about 18 years old, maybe, um, with mm. Prince Charles and in the middle, King Charles now, and the Queen there at the front. Where's, Where's that? that? That's the Braemar Mar Games, which, of course, she missed a couple of weeks ago, which yeah. was a sign she wasn't too good. But I was very pleased because you've got the three generations. Yes. And there is a continuity, because we've seen this week that Prince Charles embodies a lot of what she um, believed in and so on. And actually, William does. He's a cross between Diana mm. and the Queen. He's got the Queen's formality and belief in tradition and so on, and Diana's interest in modern causes and so mm. on. And he's got the good-looking Diana jeans, really, frankly, hasn't he? Well, it's, it's a fast... Oh, what, oh, this oh now, one. this is the Order of the Garter at Windsor Castle. Well, this is the formality, the formal side of the Queen. And when she walked into a room, I mean, her sister, Princess Margaret, said, well, my sister walks into a room. I just think it's an incredible um, feeling, you know, uh, and it, a great impression. And Prince Philip said of this ceremony, the Garter, where they wear all those medieval robes, he said, you know, rationally, it's ludicrous, but people do seem to like it. <laughs> and you've got the feeling with the Queen that she behaved um, sort of with formality because I think she realised if she didn't take it seriously then why would the rest of us? We're showing now another, can we oh. hold on this one because this is again... Can, no, can you go uh, back to that one, the reason? We, we're going to go back to it I hope, but again you've got the, well, the Queen describe. and Prince Philip looking at each other but in from the outer edges of the frame. Well, oh, these and are all scrolling through we're, now. We're so scrolling through well, that one, can there. I just explain it? Yes, uh, uh, that's at Ascot. They, they don't, the horses don't go all the way from Windsor Castle to Ascot. They go into the middle of the field in nowhere, the middle of Windsor Great Park. They get out of the car and they get in the 
carriage. Uh, carriage. Mm. And the Queen and Philip sit there or sat there and they, they would always interact. But one thing that Philip did very protectively is he would take his top hat off and he would shove it like that in the middle of the air because when he thought you'd got enough photographs of the Queen, he it's, protected it. And that's yes. why the, in that photograph there's a funny black sh top hat stuck in front of her, but he, he, he was very protective of the Queen. And he used to say, oh, this damn Canberra club's here again. Sorry. Mm, well, no, no, no. It's fine. Let's have a look at that one again, if we've got it. There we oh, go. there you go. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. He's, the top hat's nearly spoiling the photograph, isn't it? Well, for anybody that was near We him. can't seem to hang on uh, techie problems. We can't seem to hang on to oh, the photograph. One, there's one of him doing a loyal toast. That was his 90th birthday. Yeah. Wow. Um, of course, that loyal toast would have been to the Queen. From now on, loyal toast would be to the King. Well, he, Prince Philip used to say that one of the reasons they both lived to a great age was because of all the cumulative loyal toasts over the years. Wow, well, they're their pickled. Health. Yes, that's right. Their health was always being celebrated. Well, it's it's a a, that's a nice one of there. Harry, a yeah. young Harry. With Is that very the Braemar Games again? Yeah, that well, that's the following year. Yeah. Charles and Harry. That's, that's very sort of early very 2000s sweet. hair, what? isn't it? It's like very Rick Astley, that one. It's a bit. But, you know, <laughs> like watching The Lining State, I thought it's great he's back with the family, and I was wondering what was going through his mind, whether he thinks, you know... know. I mean, there's, there's two know. sides now, completely. There's private Harry, there's public mm. Harry, and it but was so not nice. very, it's not very... Yeah, it's interesting, though, isn't it, because private Harry doesn't seem to be very happy. No, no I don't think so. I mean, Which I think, is interesting. It's, it's... I mean, we've got this biography, autobiography coming up. Penguin have paid 17 million for it. They want their pound of flesh, and they'll want it now. They won't want it to be saccharine, and um, everything's lovely in the well, world. Well, they'll want... I mean, they'll I, want some I, edgy, yeah. newsworthy stuff, won't they? And, mm. and that's the trouble. It'll be it, to the cost of the to the royal family. I think it might get ditched, you know. He'll I think hit. it could do. I think he, he, he will so. back... He's back on board with the royal family, and, I mean, you know, wearing the uniform and everything. They're trying to bring him in. And they don't want any issue over this funeral. They don't want anybody afterwards when, you know, in a week's time, we're all sitting there saying, what went wrong? And, oh, you know, Harry and... You don't want any of that. It's got to be perfect to honour the Queen. And I think that, um, you know, with, with, with Harry, I, I just got this feeling he could dip, dump that book. You know. Yeah. I mean, it'd be, it'd be very... Uh, he'd win his place back, wouldn't he? It, 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 in well, our hearts, if he did that. Absolutely. I mean, you've seen the other things. Like we've seen David Beckham queuing in that. I mean, if he hadn't queued, that would be controversial. Yes. Uh, the fact that he did has endeared us to absolutely. him. Absolutely, and it's, it's little things like that that people remember. I said with the funerals that, you know, Ed, the Queen's great-grandfather, Edward VII, his little dog, oh, his yes. Cane Terrier, yeah. was, in was in part the of the funeral procession, yeah. Caesar, the dog that they all hated, right. the courtiers, because, you know, he's a nasty little thing. But, I mean, <laughs> but it was the King's dog, and he had a thing yes. saying, I am the King's dog around his neck. Oh. And people remembered that. You know, at Churchill's funeral, it was the big thing my mum remembers, who's 100 next week, is all the cranes coming down in the Pool of London, which mm. the dockers... Um, you know, Bowing, did yes. as a sort of gesture. Even though some of them didn't want to and had yeah, to be apparently. paid to, apparently. <laughs> but there you go. Well, I know there's a story behind all of these things often, isn't there? Mm. Um, but it t uh, are you going to be um, working tomorrow, taking pictures? It, hopefully I'll be doing something. I've got to find out yet what. Everything's quite last minute. It's, it's history in the making, isn't it? Mm. Every day something different happens, so I've got to pick up a... A pass and see and say my farewell. I've got a picture, actually, I was quite pleased. You know, the rolling um, news, yeah. the rolling footage of the lying in state. I found myself, so I've uh, taken a screenshot. Oh, so you've oh, really? been through Westminster Hall? Oh, yeah. Oh, That's public, they... yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh. What was it like as an experience for you as someone who's, you know, sort of worked with her, you know, or even, albeit, albeit at a distance? To... Uh, emotionally charged, I think. I mean, I think I thought that... That bit, um, you, there was a lots of good-natured feeling. There's not been any badness. There was one guy pushed in near me, which was, oof, you know, but bad news. But when you got in the hall, just for a second, you were on your own. There was the mm. Queen, and I just bowed and said, thank you, mm. Mom, for, mm. for me, really, for everybody. I think uh, we all feel tremendous thanks for what she's done over the years. Mm. And even with photography, if you like, she's been very enduring. She's never lost a temper, no. like Philip. Get out, you damn fool. <laughs> you know. yeah. or Princess and, Prince, Margaret. and Princess Anne telling everybody to naff off. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know a photographer in the 70s, from the 70s, and it, it definitely wasn't naff off. Yeah, no, I can imagine she's uh, Princess Anne is a... strong enough to use An other words. Yeah. yeah. But, well, look, but that, it, it is lovely. You're quite right. She always smiled for the photographers. And the incredible thing, uh, having um, once, uh, once upon a time when I met her, asked a photographer to take... I said, I'm in the lineup. Please take a picture. 
and took a picture that I'm immensely proud of. Uh -huh. But in it, the Queen looks absolutely thrilled to meet me. Oh, well, who okay. wouldn't be? But she didn't know who I was. But... but no. Um, but she must have been like that to everybody. That must have been the smile one of, is one of her gifts. But her skill was, like, when there was an investiture, she said three questions to each person. Now, Elizabeth Taylor got three, and so did the lollipop lady that yes. served 50 years. Is that right? She didn't differentiate. She didn't like celebrity and anybody. No. Great, I was there when she met Madonna, and it was so oh. funny. Madonna must have spent, you know, a fortnight deciding what to wear. It, absolutely beautiful, immaculate. And this guy said, and this is Madonna who sang, who was dying another day, the James Bond, you know. And she sang the sang the, 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 the what do you call it the um it's a signature tune or yeah, you mean, I don't the, know what you mean. And the queen just said, "Oh, did you?" and walked away. Quite <laughs> <laughs> right, well, said, <laughs> love it, love I, it. Because I met her on the day that Andrew and Fergie, uh, the Duchess of York, had uh, announced their engagement, oh. and the photographers all came up to me and said, "Can you ask her how she feels today? We need a line oh. for tomorrow's paper." Mm. And so I said to her. Uh, forgive me if I've told you this before. I said to her, um, oh, Your Majesty, you must be so thrilled at the announcement today of, of Prince Andrew's engagement. And she went, how nice. Yes. And I thought, oh, that's not good enough. I, I better try again. So I said it again. I, 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 three different ways Ooh. of saying, how do you feel, ma'am? And she just went, how nice. Yeah, how I know. nice. I know, no, no comment. And I've got, this, I've got this feeling that when you say how nice... It makes, you you, it makes you smile, and I think maybe that was one of her tricks. That could be one of the tricks, mm -hmm. I think.